All right, you guys, I'm finally gonna take the time and do the step-by-step -step full tutorial on how to get the Rumbot working with OBS to get your Rumble alert showing up for your live streams. So step one, before you even open up OBS or do any other weird stuff, we're gonna go ahead and just pop open a web browser. And then we're just gonna type in rumbot.org. That'll take you straight to their GitHub where you download the Rumbot. So if you guys don't know where it's at, everyone seems to be confused. I've had a handful of people ask me where to find it, as well as I know that uh, they've been asking other people who have alerts on where they find it. It's right here. You click right here. After you click there, you're gonna see these right here. You can download the source code if you're that much of a tryhard, but otherwise you got the alerts 2.03.zip. zip. That's what you want. We'll go ahead and download that. Next, we're gonna to need to get something called Node.js. So if you just Google Node.js, it'll pop up right here. So this right here is um, the engine in which this is going to run in. I always get the current. I don't think it matters which one you get, but I just grab current. That's what I've been using. Alrighty, after you guys get your two files, you got your node set up and then you got your zip file right here, which is gonna be your Rumbot alerts. You're gonna go ahead and run the node uh, install. So I already have this installed, so I'm not gonna install it. Um, so that's why it's saying repair, remove, whatever. So I will say this, when you guys go to install it, there'll be a box to check right here. You don't have to check it. It's asking you for like extra features and other stuff. You don't need it. Don't worry about checking it. Um, just go ahead and just install the base Node.js. And if you're wondering what Node.js is, um, Google it. Shouldn't be installing stuff on your computer if you don't know what it is. I'm just kidding. Uh, basically, uh, for JavaScript to run, it needs an engine. Google, uh, as well as like Firefox and your web browsers generally have an engine built into it. Um, but if you're running, for instance, JavaScript outside of a uh, web browser environment, you're going to need something like a Node.js, which is basically just an engine outside of a website. So that's basically what you're going to be using um, to run the Rumbot. So make sure you install that. That is very important. This will not work without it. Next, uh, we're going to go ahead and un uh, unpack the files. I'm going to do this. I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it Rumbot right there. And then uh, I'm basically just going to extract files and then uh, I'll just basically stick it in that Rumbot folder right there. There we go. As you can see, it'll start populating with all of my Rumbot goodies. So that is now my Rumbot. Now this is something that I personally like to do. You guys don't have to do, but I'm gonna go ahead and take it and I'm gonna go ahead and throw it inside of the programs files just cause I like to keep my programs in here. Um, you don't have to do this. You can put this folder uh, with all this stuff wherever you want. You can even leave it in your downloads folder if you want. Just don't delete anything in here cause you're gonna need it all to run. Um, so I put it in my programs file and then basically I'll just go ahead and create a shortcut. And then uh, I'll take the uh, shortcut, drop it on my desktop. So that way it's easy for uh, quick use. And then we'll just rename it Rumba, Rumbooty, Rumbot. And then we'll go ahead and stick that right up there. So that is Rumbot installed. And now we're pretty much ready to go. So we're gonna go ahead and boot up the Rumbot. We're gonna drag our OBS over here. And the first thing we gotta do when we get to the front page is we see all this goodness right here. Um, if you guys want a little more information on this, obviously shout out to Vapin and uh, Global Gamer. They're the ones who put all this together in such a quick fashion for us. So we all have our alerts set up. So go ahead and uh, hop on over his channel, watch as he explains things like this to get help and stuff. If you guys need any extra help or have any bugs you want to report or anything like that. Um, but for instance, uh, on this page, you're really only going to need a couple things here. So this right here, show live, uh, show alerts while live, basically I'm assuming that this shows only, yeah, alerts only when live streaming. So basically the alerts won't happen. Like if you have Rumbot open, your alerts won't pop off while you're say recording or something. It'll only happen while you're live streaming. Um, if you only live stream with OBS, then you don't have to worry about it, just leave it off. But if you're like me, who don't, sometimes does recording uh, and stuff like that, then you might wanna click this just to make sure you don't have random notifications pop up and ruin your whole recording. So I'm gonna leave it off because uh, the wife only streams on her computer. She does not record, so it doesn't really matter. So we need to populate these three boxes right here. So to do that, we're gonna hop in OBS, go to tools and WebSocket server. So this will be unchecked. So go ahead and check WebSocket server, make sure that's enabled. And then you can go right here, show connect info. So when you show connect info, it'll give you all of the goodies to basically, yes, there we go. It'll give you all these goodies to let you connect. So if you guys are wondering, um, your IP, that's not your real IP address. That's just the IP address that's been assigned to you uh, via your browser. So you don't have to get all crazy with it. Um, once you guys got all this set up right there, that's pretty much this page. That's pretty much all you have to do here. 
Um, you can, you know, show your password. And then, of course, you can save constantly just in case. I haven't had this crash on me yet. I haven't heard anyone having it crash on them. But it's always a good idea to hit save in between just to make sure you don't lose any settings in case your computer turns off for whatever reason or something. So once we have that set up, we're going to switch on over to Rumble Controls. Now, this is where you're going to input your API. So if you guys don't know where to get your API, basically hop into your user account, go into your settings, and on the giant settings drop down on the side, look where it says Live Streaming API. Go ahead and do your channel or username. If you're using a channel, then go into your channel and copy that API there. If you do not have an API there, click Generate API Key, and then it'll give you one. You're going to copy that key and paste it in the top here. Next setting that we're going to have here is this check API interval, two seconds. Two seconds is the lowest that they want you to use um, that they've been, otherwise you get errors. Um, something probably with requesting too many times from Rumble servers. So don't go lower than two seconds. Um, I usually will set this around three to five seconds. So we'll go ahead and throw a five in there because uh, that's, that's usually more than enough. And basically what this does is this is how many times um, Rumbot is going to check uh, send a request to the server to ask for uh, any updates regarding new followers and donations and stuff. So however often you want that to happen from two seconds to, I don't know, however long you feel like putting it. So we're going to leave it at five. Next is the name of scenes. So basically you can have up to four scenes currently right now with alerts. We are only going to need two for the wife specific use case because she only has two um two scenes that we really use on the other two is an ending and a starting scene. So she doesn't really need it on those. So we're going to go ahead and do the first scene that we want it on is going to be gaming. And the second scene we want it on is going to be chatting. So these are her two scenes. If you have more, you put them in here. If you only have one, then you put it up here. Um, next is time between alerts. So I like to do about three seconds in between this time between alerts is say the API um, the Rumbot goes and checks the API and it, it gives it back saying you have two new followers and a new subscriber that happened all within the last five seconds. Uh, instead of um, displaying them all at once or overlapping each other, uh, this will put time in between alerts, basically putting them, putting them in line. So this is going to tell you how much time in between each alert. And remember that it's got to go through the phase of running your full alert. So say you have 10 seconds for one alert. Then it will count to three, then display the next alert. Uh, say you have six seconds on that one, it'll do six, and then it'll count to three again and display the next one. It's like standing in line and putting three seconds between each alert. Um, you can put this to whatever you want. I like three. Uh, if you're super popular, maybe do 10, 10 or 15, if, unless you want your stream, just all alerts, all stream. So next one is our follower scene. So the follower scene is where we're going to basically set up our first scene in OBS. So the first thing you want to do is how long do you want it to display for? You don't have to set this now if you don't know exactly what you want your scene to be. Um, but I kind of already have a general idea and I believe seven seconds is long enough and I can always come back and, and adjust that. Obviously, make sure that this is checked. Make sure that we got check boxes all here. Use switch scene is basically the old way that the Rumbot was doing it. No one's using that anymore. I would suggest not using it. Um, I would use the scene source, which is checked by default. So just make sure that's checked and you don't have to do anything else. This is going to be the names, the two names that you're going to be using in OBS to name the scene and the source. Now, just know you can change these to whatever you want. Just make sure it matches in OBS. I suggest if you don't know what you're doing, um, leave it, leave it this. It makes it so much easier if you just leave it default. That way you don't have to confuse yourself on anything. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is make a scene um, and the screen's going to go black and I'm probably going to have to add some audio there um, for a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and first basically take follower username and follower scene. So we're going to make a name of scene. We're going to make a scene called follower scene down here in OBS. Go to your scenes, add scene, follower scene. There we go. And we're going to hit OK. So as you can see, I've added my scene here just so that way I can record this scene that I'm making. But yours will be blank here and blank here. So just pretend like this stuff isn't here right now, uh, even though it definitely 100% is here right now. So the first thing we're going to want to add is we're going to want to add our text GDI. And the text GDI is going to be this one right here. So we're going to call it follower username. And that is because this is the source that it's going to be sending the parsed information um, for this particular one, which will be your follower. So anytime it gets a new follower, it's going to send the text to this source. And basically, it's going to populate it in this area. But because the Rumbot isn't working right now, it's not going to show anything. It's just blank. 
So you can put in a placeholder. Um, it will it will uh, get rid of this when a new name comes in. So you can just name this whatever you want. I suggest using a name um, that will keep it um, long enough to where you can center it properly because some people have longer names and some people have shorter names. Uh, I suggest going with the long name so it doesn't get cut off. You can choose your font style here. You can also add an outline here, which I like to add outlines. So we'll go seven and we'll go ahead and do some pinkish purple and there you go follow her name so like I said don't mind my my camera and don't mind my desktop recording that's just so you guys can see this um, I would suggest making this small right um, and not too small but small enough to where if someone's really long name pops up it's not gonna take up the space we're gonna right click it we're gonna go to transform and then I always do center horizontally that's just that's just how I roll so now we have a scene that's basically just gonna show follower name that of a new follower that's boring so we need to add more let's go ahead another text this one doesn't matter what you're going to name it i like to name it what the text is because it just helps me keep track of it so i'll just say um is now following or wait actually let's change it up has followed you there we go has followed you and then in here in the text area you're going to want to put as followed you. So this text will never change. This is just a regular old text. It's not going to change to anything. So um, you can basically type what you want and expect it to stay. It's only this one that it has, shares the same name as this is, is going to change to whatever um, the newest information has been updated. I like to make the text the same size. Um, so generally, I pick my smallest text on the screen and then size all my other text to it. So we'll go ahead and say that that is good right there has followed you we're going to right click it we'll go to transform and then we're going to center horizontally as well so now it's going to say insert follower name here it has now followed you that'll be the scene that'll be the alert that's still pretty boring gotta add more so you can add videos you can add images you can add frankly whatever you want you can build an entire scene in this and basically rumbot toggles the scene on and off so whatever you have on this scene is going to show up on your alert so I want to go ahead and add a GIF. So we're just gonna put this one as follower GIF because that's just easy for me to keep track of. Always click unload image when not showing. It's always a good way to just kind of make sure that you get your, um, your resources on your PC squared away. I'm gonna want this right here. Like I said, don't mind this um, desktop recording and stuff because the desktop recording will not be in the final cut of this. This is just so I can show you. We're going to go ahead and click um, transform and we're going to center horizontally because I like it centered. Now we have a full on alert. So if I turn off my desktop recording, that's what the alert is going to look like, which is cool. That's not a bad, bad thing, but we, we need a little more. I'm still not satisfied. It takes a lot, you know? So we're going to go ahead and do a media source. Now you can do, like I said, an MP4 with audio and stuff, but uh, I break everything up uh, with a GIF. And uh, we're going to put MP3 because I do have an MP3 sound I want to play, a sound bite. We're going to go ahead and use hardware decoding, close file when inactive. Always make sure you guys are doing that. And then for the local file, I'm going to go ahead and pick my song, which is going to be this one. And it's going to get really loud whenever I click OK. So just a heads up. I'm going to cut it out, actually, of recording. So I uh, went ahead and muted it because you could see it's playing and it is just super loud. So we're, first thing we're going to do is we're going to adjust the volume. You can have this set to loop and it will play the audio in the entire duration of what you have set in the Rumbot here. So just know that. Um, but if you only just want to play the audio file and then have the text stay, that's what I'm doing. I only have it played once. But if you do want to loop it, you can always loop it. I'm not going to do that. Um, so I'm just going to turn it off and turn it back on so I can see where the audio levels are. I'm going to drop this down to probably right around... 20, I want to say like 25 to 27 ish is okay. I'm okay with that sound. I think that'll be good enough. So now I'm going to go ahead and click on right here and I'm going to go to advanced audio properties. Now this is important. Um, I always uncheck the tracks. You don't have to do that. That's just me. Keep them on whatever tracks you guys are recording on. Um, I always like to put everything on mono and then I always, always put monitor output. So monitor and output makes it to where I can hear it and you guys can hear it. Um, and that's a key because I want to be able to know when I get a notification. So now when I turn it on and I cycle it. Yay! 
We can both hear it. There we go. So now we have our audio, we have our GIF, we have our text. That is our follower scene. So let's go ahead and move on to the subscriber scene. So the same thing as the follower scene, we're gonna go down here, we're gonna add. You can also click this plus button if you're lazy. Um, we're gonna go over here and we're gonna click on subscriber. And I'm gonna copy and paste it because I am lazy. And hit okay and the screen is gonna go black. All right, I got my desktop back up here for you guys so you guys can see me recording on it again. So now we need to set up this scene. So this scene you can see there is subscriber username, subscriber amount dollars and then display for how many seconds. This is for how long it's gonna go. I set it to seven as well, because that's just generally what I keep them. I think that's long enough for their name to pop up and for us to catch it as a streamer, um, but also not too long to where it's like just kind of blocking the screen for an unnecessary amount of time, especially if you're the more popular you are, um, the more uh, hectic it'll get on your stream. I do not use the subscriber amount dollars um, because it's always $5. There's no specific amount. So I just check that box off. Um, so now that we made our scene, it's time to start populating it once again. Ignore this stuff. This is just me recording. So pretend this stuff isn't here. You guys won't see any of that on yours. It'll just be blank. So the first thing we need to do is add another text source. We need a text GDI. And the name of this matters. So we're gonna go ahead and copy the subscriber user name because that's what we want this source to be. And then here, I'm just gonna put subscriber name. Um, and this is just a placeholder, remember that. You can obviously do all your fonts and all your stuff in here, outlines, you know what I mean, gradients, whatever you guys wanna do, custom text extents, you can do all of that here. Um, but for the sake of a tutorial, I'm keeping it simple and just showing you guys how to get it set up. Uh, and let's center that horizontally. So basically the subscriber name, because it shares the source name, shares the name of this one right here. Whenever it sends a new username for a new subscriber, it will send it to here and auto populate this box with that person's name. This is just a placeholder, like I said, because I'm using it to center um, so that way I can have an idea of where the name is going to show up at. So I suggest you guys do populate it with something and don't worry, you don't have to delete it. It will get overridden the second Rumbot um, sends over new information. So this is just for centering purposes. I, I like I said, suggest putting something semi long in there. So that way you don't end up with the names coming off the screen when someone has a really long username. So since we don't need the subscriber amount dollars, I'm not going to make a text for it. You can if you want. I'm not going to. Um, but we do need more here as well. So basically, we go through the same thing that we did with the follower scene. And we're going to add another text. And uh, this one is going to be called um, is now subscribe. You guys can label this however you want. This is just how I want to do it. Now subscribed. Here we go. Boom. Um, I like my text to be the same size again. So we're going to go ahead and resize that to make it roughly the same size. There we go. Is now subscribed and I'm going to put it underneath. And then we're going to do the transform center horizontally again. And then now we're going to go ahead and add our image. And this is going to be subscriber GIF. Subscriber GIF. Uh, unload image, but not showing like always. And uh, here's the new sub GIF. That's what it's gonna be. And then uh, I'm gonna have to be quiet while I add the audio because I'm gonna have to cut that part out because it gets insanely loud. Like you guys don't understand, like blow your eardrums out loud. So until I edit it, so we'll center that horizontally. And last but not least, we are gonna go ahead and add the media source, which is gonna be our MP3. So we're gonna name this subscriber mp3 and hit okay we're going to use hardware encoding close file when inactive i'm not going to be looping so i don't care about the loop and uh we are going to go ahead and choose uh which one is it i don't remember which one oh this one yes yes all right so i have muted it now so you guys won't be able to hear it and neither will i so i'm going to toggle it off and on and uh, adjust the volume again on this one. So we're just gonna toggle it and see where it's peaking at. Peaking up pretty high, geez. That's a little too low. 
So we're hitting, you can put a limiter filter on this, by the way, if you want. If you want to put a limiter on it, you can. Um, I'm going to lower it just a little bit more, maybe like two more decibels, three more decibels. Uh, that should be loud enough. So we'll go ahead and do the same thing. Advanced properties, very important to make sure that you turn it to monitor and, and uh, output. So that way it outputs to stream and to your headphones. And then I always click mono and I always put everything on track one. Once again, don't do this if you don't know what your audio is set up on. This is just how I do it. But you do need the monitor and output to make sure you can hear it. So now we'll go ahead and turn it on and trigger Roll it. Roll it off. We're done here, boys. I got a new mommy now. That sounds good to me. Sweet. So now our subscriber scene is done. So our final scene we're going to go ahead is going to be our rant scene, which is going to be donations. So let's go ahead um, and set up our rant scene. As you can see down here, we're going to copy this name. It's rant scene. So control C and uh, we're going to create that new scene now. All right. So now that we got the new scene created, um, once again, ignore, uh, we have this beautiful layout here very very high tech stuff we got um we're gonna go through these real quick so display i usually do 10 seconds to 15 ish depending um i use the username so i have it checked i do not put the rant message on there that's because the rant shows up in my chat on my stream anyways so there's no point to have the message pop up in a gif as well um it's just kind of double pasting it on my screen so i uncheck that but if you do want it leave it checked and all you have to do is the same steps for making one of these, you just make one for the messages. Um, but I do use the dollar amount. So we need to make two texts named the, these two names right here. So let's go ahead and do that now. So the first one, we're going to go ahead and add a text GDI. We're going to grab the rant username. We're going to paste that there. And then we're going to paste that there. So that way I have a template on the sizing. We're going to go ahead and throw it in there. We're going to do our transform horizontally. <clears throat> you can have this set up however you want. This is just how I do it. We're going to add the next text, which is going to be our dollar amount. We're going to control C that. And we're going to control V that. So this is how much money they donated. So the first one is who donated. The second one now that we're doing the rant dollar amount is obviously the dollar amount. So let's say someone was generous and gave me $100. All right. So that's how much. That's just like my placeholder. So I can get everything centered. Um, but obviously you don't want it to just say the person's name and the money. You need a little bit more. So we're going to go ahead and add another one and we're just going to put, I'm just going to call this one donation or rant or whatever you want to call it. And then I'm going to put uh ranted, ranted or I don't know. I don't know. I don't like calling it ranted. I'd rather do donated. I think donated sounds better donated. And then uh, I'll do a dollar sign. <clears throat> and then uh, we'll go ahead and just add a cool font for this. My eyes are closed. My eyes are closed. That's the font right there. That's a terrible font. Oh my God. Zombie. There we go. Oh, that doesn't have a dollar sign. You kidding me? Okay, whatever. I don't want small text. There, there you go. Looks terrible too. Why can't I get a good text? You guys help me out here. Throw me a freaking bone here. Come on. Mongolian, whatever. Okay. We're just gonna leave it that. Okay. So now, um, same thing, I like to size everything. Um, so you wanna make sure that you center things properly with this one because um, how this is gonna go is $1 is gonna be one space, $2 will be both of these, the $10 or 10, anything for two digits, I'm sorry, will be the $10. Anything three digits will take up the full three digits. So space that accordingly. So we'll put that like right there. We'll put that like right there. That looks close enough, that, lo that looks good. So this will be username for instance insert username here gamers error donated $100 that's how it's gonna work the donated will never change this will change based on the amount donated this will change based on the username that gets sent over so that's good there we still need more obviously we need our image so we're just going to put this one rant gif right here uh unload and we got our chicken Take our chicken, size them accordingly. Oh, we're going to make this a big chicken. There we go. Um, like I said, I like to use the whole scene for my thing, and you'll see why we can resize it later. So I suggest using all the real estate you can or formatting on one side or the other side, depending on how you want to do it. I just use straight in the middle as big as I can make it. Um, so now we got our chicken. So the last thing we need to do is, once again, add our media source. So this one will be rant MP3 right there. And use hardware decoding, close file. We're not going to loop it because we don't want to loop it. 
And we're going to go ahead and grab this one. And I had to stop talking because I'm going to cut that part out of how loud it is. And uh, I'm going to adjust the audio again. Basically just based off visuals. <laughs> Uh, I like it. Like I said, since my mic hovers around the 15, the game hovers around 40 to 30. Uh, I want this to be a little louder than the game, but obviously a lot less uh, loud that compared to my mic. So I'm going to have it stick around maybe a little less. That looks about right. Yeah, that should be good. So we're going to go ahead again and we're going to do the monitor and output. And uh, I do my little thing where I keep everything on one track and on mono. Um, okay, so now let's go ahead and test that one out. Perfect chicken dance. Perfect chicken dance. All right, couldn't be better. All right, so we now have our three scenes made. Once again, don't mind the desktop and don't mind these other two audio sources. You won't have those in there unless you're recording like me. So now we have all of our scenes. We're done here, boys. I got a new mommy now. Okay. Okay. Killing it, killing it, killing it. Alrighty. So I'm just going to double check everything and make sure everything's good. Everything looks pretty good. We already have our API and everything set up. Um, now, um, I guess I'll add it to the desktop so you guys can see what it looks like when it triggers on and off. So I'm going to end up adding all of this stuff to the desktop too, because I have it in here. Um, but now what we need to do is, um, I'm going to remove my recording and stuff from these so that way they don't show up when the rant shows up. And then uh, I'm going to come back and show you guys how to set the rest of the stuff up. All right. So you guys won't see me or hear me, but I'm going to run through the scenes real quick just to show you what the sources and audio and stuff will look like without my desktop and stuff in there. We're done here, boys. I got a new mommy now. And that's what they look like. So um, now uh, I don't have my desktop recording in the gaming and stuff. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and add it so you guys can see. Actually, I can just show you in the desktop scene since it already has the recording. Um, and basically, we're just going to do the same thing for the gaming and chatting. It's just hard for me to do it um, and show it at the same time because I don't want to mess up her scenes, you guys. It takes me forever to set all this stuff up. So anyways, so what you're going to do um, and for the scenes that you want your alerts to go off in, you're going to go ahead and right click. And then you're going to go ahead and add scene, all right? And then you're going to make sure that you click on your three scenes that you have. So the first one is the follower scene. So we'll add that. All right. We're going to resize it and we're going to put it where we want it. So let's say we just want it right there. That's where we want our scene. So next scene we're going to go ahead and add um, is going to be what comes next. Uh, the rant scene because it comes up next. All right. We'll put that in the same area just so that they all show up in the same area. You can put them wherever you guys want. This is just how I'm doing it. I'm going to go to subscriber scene Hold and up. there you go. Here, Those are all three I of our now. alerts now. Um, so now you have all three of your alerts. Now it is very important to make sure these are at the very top because if they're underneath stuff, for instance, if I'm, if my display capture or my camera is in front of it, it's going to show up behind it. You want it to be on top because you want it to show up. And then now you need to turn all of them off. Right. This is how they should always look by default. So what Rumbot will do is when it senses a new, let's say, follower, Rumbot will will turn this visibility on for seven seconds and then turn it off. And that is how Rumbot works. So by default, you should have all of these off and let Rumbot take the rest there. You won't have to touch them anymore once they're like that. So I'm going to go ahead and add these three to the gaming and chatting scenes right here by doing the same process. And then uh, I'm going to come back and we're going to run a test. Alrighty, so now I have all of the scenes on um, all of these three scenes inside of these other scenes, um, chatting and gaming, which you guys can see up here, chatting, gaming, desktop. Those are the three scenes that I want uh, Rumbot to look at turning these on in. So obviously, we can turn them all on and we can turn them all off. Um, but like I said, default, leave them off. So we're going to go ahead and uh, go into Rumbot and just double check through our settings. Um, so we make sure, you know, checks are, checks are checked and uh, API is in there. We have our three seconds between alerts. We have our follower display for seven seconds. Subscriber scene, seven seconds. Uh, we don't want the subscriber or subscriber dollar amount. 
rant scene. We don't want the rant message. At least I don't. You guys can set them up if you want them. I don't want them, so I'm not going to use them. So we're going to go ahead and save. And uh, the last thing we're going to do is hit start. And uh, you're going to get popped up with this bad boy right here. And it's basically just a CMD is just running everything in the background for you. Um, and we're going to wait and see if it pops up our most recent yeah! follower. There it is. And then we should probably get a subscriber one as well. I believe the rant ones aren't working for like most recent rant, but it's okay. These are things that are probably going to pop Hold up. Off. We're done here, boys. There it is right there. I got a new mommy now. Um, these are going to pop up basically every time you start up the rum bot. It just goes through your most recent ones. And then every time a new one comes back, it'll do it again. Um, and if you guys were looking down here, you saw these get toggled on. So if I go ahead and close this out and hit start to restart it, hopefully they said they were going to work on something to come with a test. Um, so hopefully they come out with the test mode soon so we can just test it instead of restarting it. But you guys watch, see, it toggled on, on its own. And after seven seconds, it'll turn itself off. There you go. And now this one to do the same. Uh, any minute now. Pull it off. We're done here, boys. There we go. This one, sorry. Now. There you go. Turned itself on. And turned itself off. So just do these and the same ones. They all have the same uh, ones in there. Uh, so they all work and function the same. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, huge shout out to uh, Global Gaming and uh, Vaping Gaming. Uh, Vaping Gamer. These guys are madmen. They threw this shit together ridiculously fast. Um and uh, they are updating it constantly. I think they've already ro rolled out like two updates since I've last used it. So I'm going to throw everything in the uh, description for you guys to go follow up to their channels and uh, the GitHub and stuff and, and all that stuff. I'm probably not going to post the links because at the very beginning of it, I just, it's it's literally Google Node.js and uh, type in uh, rumbot.org. So those those aren't really anything crazy that you have to follow clicking links and stuff. You can just type it in your browser. Um, but I'm definitely gonna make sure that they're in the description uh, and they're the guys to reach out to if you guys have any bugs or reports or need any extra help outside of what I was able to offer in this tutorial because they are the ones who made this, not me. I just have the time to sit here and put it together and show you guys um, step by step on how to set it up. So one last thing before I head out, guys, if you when you guys are done using this, you go ahead and close it out. That's all you have to do is exit and it's it's done using. And how this works is you start up OBS, you start up your rum bot, you come over here and hit start. And that is pretty much it. You leave these two boxes alone. You can minimize them or whatever and get rid of them. And uh, as long as they're open and running on your computer while you're live streaming, your alerts will pop up. So um, pretty simple setup. And like I said, to close them out, you just exit out. That's all you have to do. Just, just exit them out and they're not running anymore. So um, with that being said, though, I'm out of here, you guys. I stream Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, 8.30 p.m. Pacific. Come stop by my stream and hang out with me and all that good stuff. I'm always playing video games, um, but I usually end up doing tutorials when uh, I get people asking me to help them set something up. So uh, this took a little while. I'm going to have to edit this video down, but um, yeah, I'll catch you guys later. Come stop by my streams and hang out with me and test out my new alerts and whatnot.